Hello, welcome to CSPC 2018. My name is Naveed Aziz, and I'm here with Gordon McCauley, CEO of CDRD. Thank you, Gordon, for being here. Thank you for having me. And for your time. Um, so let's start by, um, let me ask you uh, to tell us a little bit about what CDRD is uh, and how, what makes it unique. So CDRD is Canada's drug development venture. We're a national organization that really does three things. First, we create companies of scale. Uh, so that's taking interesting technology assets in Canada and around the world and bringing them together, either organized thematically or around a particular disease discipline, uh, and trying to create a company over the course of a couple of years that we can spin out into, into something of substance. So they always start small. They always start with a, either an idea or a target or an area that seems uh, interesting that uh, usually a researcher uh, is quite interested in and brings to us. But our, fo our focus is to take those ideas and then have real commercial intent building them into companies of scale. Uh, we know the team's pretty good at that because to this point we've done it seven times. Those companies have attracted $270 million worth of risk capital. So uh, we're off to a, a, an awfully good start on that pathway. And at any time we have three, four, five uh, future ones that we're, we're developing on a, on a stealth mode. The second thing we do is help existing companies scale up. Okay. Uh, Canada leads the world on a relative basis in starting up companies and on a relative basis starting university-based companies. One of the things we do a lousy job of is taking those companies and then helping them scale and become uh, much larger. So we typically are working with uh, mid-sized Canadian biotech companies and the real focus of our effort is how do we help them go from 30 or 50 employees to 300 or 500 employees. Uh, generally we're working on uh, an additional pipeline project that they may not have the resource or bandwidth for. Uh, sometimes we're working on something complementary, or sometimes we're doing something that they don't have the, uh, the capacity internally to do uh, with, their, with their core program. That program we've done 30 times with, uh, with 30 different companies, and again, uh, generally speaking, to very uh, compelling success. The third thing we do is help train the next generation of leaders in Canada, both as scientists and business people. So it's grouped under something we call the CDRD Academy. Uh, on the science side, uh, this is a, a more established part of our program. Uh, it's a really compelling program that focuses on helping scientists be more commercially minded. And they come to us, generally speaking, uh, as postdocs, and they work through all of the scientific disciplines, but also have access to um, all of the, the, the commercial processes and the commercial drug development processes. We know that program is successful because we've graduated 225 people, 96% of whom have gone on to relevant jobs in industry. Uh, we recently launched this year uh, a program called the CDRD Executive Institute that we did with a million dollar grant from Pfizer Canada that's focused on the other side of the equation, taking uh, business people generally who are uh, mid-career in Canada and helping them with the leadership skills to become the future C-suite leaders of, of tomorrow. Uh, that program is a 10-month, uh, it's essentially like a part-time MBA if you will, uh, for people who have full-time jobs. It rotates across the country. It started in September in uh, Vancouver. It meets uh, towards the end of this month, November, in, uh, in Montreal, then January, Toronto, back to Vancouver and Toronto again, graduating, uh, graduating in May. What is exciting about that program is a handful of things. First of all, uh, when we started out, we said it's going to be 50-50 women and men and it's going to be balanced reflecting the diversity of Canada and it's going to reflect the geography of Canada. And to be candid we thought that was going to be difficult. It turned out, maybe because we were explicit in saying so, it turned out to be very easy. We had really high quality candidates that met all of those criteria from across the country. The second thing that's exciting about it is that we're delivering the content with a group called the Centre for Creative Leadership which is uh, based in North Carolina and is literally the top group in the world in providing leadership training. Uh, so it, it takes uh, Canadians with, in a Canadian context but provides them with globally relevant 
uh, leadership skill training. So we're pretty excited about it. So that's, that's what CDRD does. And so the question, why is it unique or what's different about us? We have a great privilege. And that is, we get to operate with commercial intent, but without the commercial pressures of day-to-day -day business. And that is a great privilege because it allows us to think longer term about projects uh, and scientific programs. It allows us to think longer term than the typical entrepreneur might around uh, a startup company and think that's an interesting molecule or that's an interesting uh, area of focus. What do we need to do over the next couple of years to really make it compelling and a potential company of scale that's going to attract a serious Series A investment? And that's really unique. And, it's, and for me, it's, it's a lot of fun. As somebody who's a, a venture capitalist and, and, and CEO for a long time, um, that's, that's really exciting to work at. Fantastic, that's such a brilliant mandate and something that's really important to the Canadian life science sector. So it's, it's, it's good to hear that. So just, just to take that a little bit uh, forward, we are at CSPC. So um, how does the CDRD activities then relate to the Canadian or, or science policy in general? Well, I mean, first of all, I think it's important to note that the need for something like CDRD is a uniquely Canadian focus. The essence of translational work, translating research to commercial activity, is a global initiative, and that's an area where we're engaged with the leading groups. In fact, we, as an organization, helped found the uh, leading group of the top five translational research centers in the world sharing best practices and ideas. But the, the, the unique formulation that we have is a Canadian issue. And I'll tell you why we exist. We exist because Canada is a research powerhouse. We represent 0.5% of the world's population, but 5% of its innovative output. And it doesn't matter what metric you want to use. It, choose a metric, we punch well above our weight uh, as, as a country. As I said earlier, we lead the world on a relative basis in both startup companies and starting up university-based companies, but we do a lousy job of, of scaling those companies. So how do we relate to, to science policy? Look, the science in its own right, research in its own right, is an inherent good. It's, from a public policy perspective, it's incredibly important for any advanced society, any advanced economy, to invest significantly in research. But it's also okay to expect an economic output from some of that. And, and our job is to make sure in the Canadian context that we see in life sciences the, uh, the uh, economic output from the enormous investment that we've made as a society in basic life sciences research. Thank you. So um, can you just tell me a little bit about the, the session, the panel you moderated this morning um, called the Canadian Life Science Tours Canadian Life Science Supercluster. What are what was the theme, and what are some of the the main take home messages from the discussion that you had earlier? Well, we we, we had we had a spectacular panel um, that I had the privilege of moderating. We had uh, Krima S. Sabar, who's the CEO of Quark Venture. She was my predecessor at CDRD, and and relevant to the to the question, she was the chair of the federal government's uh, Health and Biosciences uh, Economic Strategy Table. Uh, we had uh, Stephanie Kidu, who's the CEO of BioCanRx, a really interesting network uh, around uh, advanced oncology applications. Uh, uh, Dr. Rafi Hofstein, who's the CEO of Mars Innovation, uh, and a new Canadian. I like to remind him, and we're, it's a it's a privilege for Canada to have Rafi choose Canada, and and Kate McCready, who is the Vice President of External Affairs at Biotech Canada, and probably the most knowledgeable person in the country about how to make uh, life science policy with, with uh, public policy makers come to life in, a, in an industrial con context. And what we were talking about was, why is it that when the federal government chose superclusters, there wasn't a Canadian life sciences supercluster? Well, the reality is that, that we accept it as a premise of the discussion, we don't meet the criteria. And we don't meet the criteria, first of all, because we are the only advanced pharma market in the world without a domestic anchor research-based research company. And, and that's a huge issue. And there's all sorts of reasons that people have speculated in the past about why that is. Um, uh, none, of them, uh, none of them particularly compelling in my view. 
but really the, the essence of that health and biosciences economic strategy table was how do we fill in the gaps? So the next time somebody asks the question, where is a, where is a super, where are the super clusters in Canada? Life sciences is absolutely one of them. And we had a great dialogue about the themes in that report that I think anybody in this industry who wants to see it flourish in a sustainable manner in Canada needs to read, needs to embrace, and needs to really bring to life. So there, there are things like um, certainly having agile regulation, certainly having um, uh, procurement policies that encourage uh, the ado uh, rapid adoption of uh, Canadian innovation, having capital both at the, at the larger end from a private equity perspective where there are large successful Canadian companies that, that, that they have a capital base they can, they can draw on to remain in Canada and also in the, in the venture capital realm in bringing, bringing companies forward. Uh, harnessing digital technologies, which you know, when, when, when you think about the way that life sciences in drug terms, device terms, in AI and other applications, all of these technologies are smashing together and we really need to figure out how we harness the data. So it was a great dialogue about how do we embrace those, uh, those recommendations and put them into practice. No, it was a fantastic discussion from being somebody who was in the room, I can tell you that it was very interesting and very insightful what we were talking about, so that was absolutely fantastic. It's probably notwithstanding my best efforts, but we'll, the panelists were great. <laughs> no, the whole, whole thing was absolutely fantastic. All right, so one last question uh, before I let you go, Gordon. Um, so what would you say the greatest value of CSPC in general is? So you know what, there are all sorts of interesting meetings for different specific areas of this life sciences ecosystem. So I obviously look at things through the pure uh, lens of life sciences. There are lots of, of meetings to go to where you can meet with investors or you can meet with uh, potential licensing partners. Uh, and similarly on the science side there are lots of, of uh, disease specific or or uh, discipline specific scientific meetings. There are lots of even larger uh, consortium meetings like, like neuroscience. But at the end of the day, there's only one platform in Canada that brings all of those elements together and has a dialogue about the compelling needs, uh, both from a research, of, of research policy and what we do as individual research organizations, but also as a society from a broader public policy perspective, and that's the, the Canadian Science Policy Conference. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Gordon. My I pleasure. Thanks for, your time. thanks for asking and me. Thank you from CSPC. Thank, thank you. Very much.